Open our service by singing hymn number 502. <clears throat> 502. Father, we come before the throne of grace this evening in the great name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and coming to you with praise and thanksgiving on our heart because today has been a most blessed day where we've had the privilege to come up to your house and to be with your people and our visiting pastors as well from Nigeria and then to enjoy the fellowship of your Holy Spirit where together we were able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you tonight that we can enter into your courts once again, and it is with praise and thanksgiving for all that you have done, the blessings that we have enjoyed at your hand of love and mercy, the answers to prayer that have been enjoyed and needs being taken care of, but most of all, Father, the spiritual needs of your people. Now tonight, we look to you to grace this service with your presence once again. Take charge and direct in every part from the beginning to the end. We ask you to bless the hymns that we sing, the prayers that will be offered, and then the word that will be <clears throat> given out. You give wisdom. You'll be with our pastor and you do go tonight from Port Harcourt in Nigeria, giving him special wisdom and liberty and giving out the word and help us all here to understand it, not only as it's given out, but your purpose in sending this word. And then we claim our peace and protection. You overrule every work and power of Satan. And then we ask the same for the outstations. We look to you to make these services the crowning services of the day. We pray for those in trial, a few on a continued prayer list, and those that have put their request in. We stand with them and ask you to look uh, to, to, on, on the blood of your son in their behalf. Make it a night of victory and real healing where you'll be glorified again in answered prayer. Now we ask all these favors and blessings in Jesus' precious name, amen. <clears throat> we'll continue by singing hymn number 497. <clears throat> hymn number 497.
as we go to prayer at this time, we have several requests to be remembered in prayer, including <clears throat> notes of praise. Uh, a sister was anointed uh, after the service this morning. She needs a divine touch. Find the full line of the literature in the rack, including the cards for baptism and the forms for membership. Also, just to mention once again that after the service, after the dismissal prayer, pastors will come down on the front row like we did last <clears throat> Sunday evening, and then pastors from Nigeria will sing some of their hymns for us. And now we'll continue by singing hymn number 261. Hymn number 261. And we'll sing the first and four ver fourth verses. <laughs> Let us rise, please. <clears throat> Our oh dear, most gracious, most merciful, we are thanking you for being with us from the inception of this service up to this moment. We have come to an important segment of this meeting, the time to hear you speak to us. 
We cannot speak, we cannot interpret, we cannot understand. It takes the Holy Spirit to come richly to dwell in each and every one of us, that in speaking, we speak all right, in hearing, we hear all right, and the ability to apply what you're going to talk to us, that will do wonderful works in our lives. This is what we're asking to do for us, and we thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <coughs> Brethren, we are very grateful to God for an opportunity such as this, which we least deserve, but the least among the apostles could be given an opportunity to talk to ourselves, to the congregation, even at a time like this. We have no new word to talk to ourselves. We have the same old word, and it is derived from the Bible. And the message says, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. Some of you may have read it and may memorize it. You've known it and you know where it is. But there is need for why God has now brought this message to our attention. That brotherly love shall continue. Let us take a reading in Hebrews 13, 1. Hebrews 13, 1. <clears throat> And it reads, let brotherly love continue. The church of Jesus Christ is one big family. And God expects you and me to have godly affection for your brother, for your sister, that you have to learn and to recognize your brother, your sister and to ensure that you accept your, the views of your brother, the views of your sister. That you cannot do without having a love for that person. When we have love for that person, we must always see ourselves, uh, seeing our brother, our sister, as good as ourselves. It's not better than ourselves. Love must be the foundation and it is the foundation of the work Jesus Christ came here to do. Without love for mankind, he would not have left his heavenly kingdom to come to planet Earth, where there are vultures, where there are many evil things around. But the love he had for mankind led him to this place. You know, we know that while he was here, he was going about teaching, preaching, healing the sick. Uh -huh but that mankind must be in life, in health, in prosperity. That is God's desire for mankind. That is why Jesus Christ came. Now we are asking, God is telling us that, let brotherly love continue. Yes, a good man of you, a good man of us, have been showing this love at one time or the other, but are we continuing it? The continuity of this love is what counts. It must not be breached. It will not be haphazard. It must not be stopped. But we must continue the love that Christ has given us to enjoy. We must show it to your brothers, to your sister, to show it to others. God places far greater importance on interpersonal relationship, interpersonal relationship among us as his children. How do you relate with your brother? How do you relate with your sister in the congregation such as ours? Your relationship with your brother, your sister counts a lot. When you have a good relationship with your brother, with your sister, definitely you must always count on the need and see what help you can also give. Among us, there are the sick, there are the pregnant ones, there are the nursing mothers, there are those who are less privileged. You must, if having that love in your heart, you must always pray, remember these people that are in need. That either they are sick or they are uh, in one need or the other. We must always have the desire, the interest, the mind to see what help we can give to other persons. 
And without brotherly love amongst us, we cannot do it. Everybody must be to himself, to himself, to his family, and then it ends just that way. And that's what God would not want you and me. It's a life that we don't want you and me to, to live. We'll go further again to read in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. And we read, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. The time you can do a good uh, service is when you are alive. There is no, there's no, there's nothing, no deed, nothing we shall do after this life. That as long as now that we have the opportunity, that is when you must be concerned of the need of your brother, the need of your sister. Pray for the sick, pray for the pregnant one, pray for those who are in need of one thing or the other. Because the congregation of God, the church of Christ, are made up of needy people. At our best, the Bible tells us at our best we are needy people. You might be satisfied in one area, you might be up in another area, but you discover that in the finality, you are a needy person. And God wants you and me not to be concerned about your need alone, but the need of yourself and the need of others. And that is the mind we must have to worship and to serve God in you know, all the days of our life. Let brotherly love continue. The continuity of this love is what matters. It must not be breached. It must not be haphazard. It must not be stopped halfway. But we must continue. It is this love that, 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 that was in, this, in the heart and mind of our fathers, of our fathers who came in this way, that made us today that we are here. Back several decades, back we only had the truth by correspondence, by correspondence. But time came, time came, we had the first visitor, Charles, Pastor Charles Rennett, in 1965. To why did he come to Africa? Why did he come to Nigeria? Where there's nothing good, so to say, he will see. But because of the love he has for, for God and for mankind, that he must come and see his brothers, he must come and see his sisters, that he has been corresponding with over the years. And that made him to come. And when he came, he had fellowship with us. He has come to see our needs. And uh, by his uh, coming to Nigeria, it felt uh, we had a lot of uh, improvement, changes, and other things, which hitherto were only corresponding. And correspondence is not as good as when you are talking one and one. So it is out of love that made him to come down. And we, we since then, we have been experiencing it. And that. That uh, exercise has not ended with Pastor Chet Renat. Pastor Yeager came up and they do it in a, in, a, in, a, in a bigger way. And that's where we are here today. You have, seen, you have seen me, I'm seeing you, and what a joy it is. If on earth we should live so uh, uh, lovingly among ourselves, how will the joy be in, up, in, up in heaven? So this is what we, we must, God is bringing bring our attention to. And we are saying that this must continue. It must not just be now, but as long as God gives us life, we must continue in it and to live and thereby enjoying the benefits of, of Christ. The next scripture was to read, and it takes up in First Peter, or Second Peter rather. Second Peter chapter one, verses five through eight. <clears throat> So come to chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, 
they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is true. God measures fruitfulness and, mar mar and, and the barrenness in terms of uh, uh, our spirituality, how spiritual we are in the things of God. In the world we are living, people talk about uh, fruitfulness in the material uh, wealth, uh, material wealth, financial wealth, <clears throat> and physical wealth. He is strong, he has many children, he is in money. Yes, that is what they count as well. But in the truth, in the word of God, what counts fruitfulness has to do with our standard in the spirit. What standard have we reached? In the, in the spirit. Because our spiritual standard would always make you and me to grow, showing kindness. They, they have listed a lot of um, qualities that we should, uh, in, in, uh, uh, we should enjoy. And, and beside this, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to your virtue, virtual knowledge. And it comes down to tell us we must show brotherly kindness and charity. Brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness makes you to be happy with your brother, to be happy with your sister. What touches your brother touches you. What touches your sister touches you. You are always making sure that you, those you know that are passing through one problem or the other, they are not left alone to suffer for those things that you are with them. Even your visit, visiting such people, talk with them, trying to encourage them with the word of God in their sick bed, in their, uh, in their hour of uh, uh, um, difficult conditions they are passing through. You may not only write alone, when you have the time, you write and also visit them, talk with them, share the goodness of Lord with them, brotherly kindness. When you are uh, having that thought and mind, you cannot do anything evil to your brother, to, or to your sister. You never, it's never found. You are always in sympathy. You are always in sympathy with your brother, sympathy with your sister, in the condition he is passing, passing to, or she is passing through. And you will always bring their problems to God, to God as much as you can, even without their knowledge. Brotherly kindness. It's not only by, uh, 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 by giving uh, things or money or anything of the sort, but most importantly, to pray for that brother, to pray for that sister who is in one problem or the other, to let that person come out. We have come, since we came, we asked questions here and there, and we discovered that some of our children are not worshiping with us, even here. This back home, this is what we are passing through. How concerned are we? that this matter should be taken up with God in prayer. That this matters because we have come to know that if they continue to derail, the end result is eternal, eternal, eternal damnation. Do we take that as serious? That we must always be concerned about remembering our brothers, our sons, our daughters, who Satan has deceived and now run into the world. If you don't have love for your brother, for your sister, you may not. Do it. He said, well, that is up to him. It's up to her. That is what the spirit we must show. This is what God is telling us. That as much as light in us, we must show kindness and charity towards one another. And that is what God wants you and me to do. That is showing love in action. Showing love in action. The next scripture we want to look into it's in Acts of the Apostle, <clears throat> chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed 
were of one heart and of one mind, one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. But they had all things uh, common. This is what God is telling us. Except we have love for us one another. How do, we, how do I share something that I've uh, worked over the years? Over the years, I toiled. I worked too hard to achieve the position that I now have achieved and that I'm occupying now. If I don't have love in my heart and mind, I say, well, let him work. Let him also work. Let her also work so that she will also come to. After all, it's not easy to come to a position like, to a position like this. That's what we see it. We will not see it. We will not see it as something that we should also breach to let or uh, uh, play our part to people that in such conditions to come to the position we are. Let brotherly love continue. You have been showing this love over the years, like we earlier said, and do you have the mind to continue it? Or do you say, oh, it's enough? Do we say it's enough? Oh, enough, enough of these visits, enough of this uh, um, uh, work to going to Africa, going to Nigeria, or coming to you, uh, come to USA and so on and so forth. No. We must continue. Imagine what Christ did. How he left his heavenly kingdom and came down to planet Earth where you found only vultures. Vultures. And because anything on Earth is dirty. Except that some of you, the Europeans, have now made Earth to be a heaven. As we come to see, Europeans have made uh, an earth, the earth to become a heaven. And because of this work they have done, some of them are not interested. They feel that uh, here is a heaven. Heaven, heaven starts here. So they live their lives as if this, the, the earth, this earth is the be all and the end all. But you and me, we have been privileged to come out from the world to know that this place is not the be all and the end all. And we are fighting. So that fight must continue. To struggle, struggle to struggle until the final wisdom, and the final wisdom, of course, being called into God's kingdom to receive the reward. So, brethren that had been in this way, they possessed what they possessed. They think is not their own; it is uh, belongs to everybody, and they are sharing it. The foreign work you have been doing has been a tremendous blessing, tremendous blessings over the years how by correspondence, the truth had been spread to many, 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 many places. And that work should continue for God to bless us even at the end. We are talking about the actual, actual, uh, actualizing, uh, actualization of this brotherly love. And we want God to increase our faith so that we will continue and not to stop elsewhere. Or, or a short of, short of uh, the God's blessing that we should live. Mm. To live an effective Christian life, God says we should add to our faith brotherly kindness. You can see how important it is for God that we must show this love towards ourselves. The way you treat your brothers, the way you treat your sisters in Christ could mean the difference between barrenness and fruitfulness in your knowledge of Christ. How do you treat your brother who are serving God with you? How do you treat your sister? How to, what attitude do you have towards them? What mind do you have towards them? Are you praying for yourself that you will remain in the truth even unto the end to eternal life? Do you also extend the same prayer to them all? Do you share your prayers for the benefit of your brother, for the benefit of your sister? These are what counts. That is what makes you either you are fruitful or you are barren. And God will want us to be fruitful in the things of God. Except we are fruitful. We can be cut off. God forbid. God forbid. 